Howdy there once again YouTube, my name is Ben Ferriolo. First off, this video is extremely long, so don't forget to check the parts section in the description box below. Please like, share, and subscribe if you like my work. Also, please visit my website, a link is shown on screen here right now. For information on earthquake sti uh, statistics, excuse me, how to access seismic images from the archive, my Seismo blog, how to download seismic data, analyze spectrograms, seismograms, spectral plots, helicorders, and much more. There are also hundreds of plots and seismic images on different sections of my website for different seismic events, such as the 2018 Kilauea eruptions and the 2008-2009 magma intrusion at Yellowstone Lake. There's also a link in the description box below, right under my email address, for my website. I keep adding new content, not just to my blog, but to many pages on my website, so check back every once in a while. This is the monthly volcano report for December 2018. This will also be the yearly update for the whole year of 2018. It will be just like normal, except after every part, I will include the yearly earthquake counts. The earthquake counts I state are taken directly from the United States Geological Survey and their partners, and are only earthquakes reported, not earthquakes recorded. In regards to earthquake counts, it is likely the majority of the time that the reported earthquake total for a given location and time period, especially during a swarm, is lower than the actual count of earthquakes, in some cases sometimes drastically lower. This has to do with a multitude of factors, including inability to locate, lack of instruments, among many other reasons. It is my goal to eventually major in seismology and also study volcanology. But I do believe I am now properly equipped to give you guys a heads up if anything concerning may occur at volcanoes throughout the United States. Remember, most earthquake swarms of volcanoes do not lead to eruptions, but almost every eruption is preceded by a swarm. Interesting how that works? That is why swarms should always be monitored closely, especially rapid fire sequences. The volcanoes I will be doing monthly and yearly updates on will be Yellowstone Supervolcano in Wyoming, Long Valley Supervolcano in California, Newberry Caldera in Mount Hood in Oregon, Mount Rainier in Mount St. Helens in Washington State, and Mount Shasta in Lassen Peak in California. Glacier Peak, a volcano that is about 50 miles or so east of me, pretty close to me, has no monitoring instruments except one seismic station. The Pacific Northwest Seismic Network is putting new instruments there, hopefully by the end of 20 and 2019, excuse me. So hopefully, Glacier Peak will be added to the updates once monitor installation has been completed. In this video and other updates, we will look at earthquake and deformation counts. The time period of the earthquake counts for this video is from 0 UTC, December 1st, 2018, to 2359 UTC, December 31st, 2018, and magnitudes are always going to be negative 0.5 and above, so you will see every single earthquake that was reported for this time period. Yes, earthquakes can occur at negative magnitudes but require sensitive seismographs to accurately locate. I like to call these negative earthquakes micro minis. Every month's update will be uploaded a few days after the month in question has ended. Also, please go visit Scott's new channel called the NW Geology Guy. I'll post a link to his channel in the description box below. I hope you all had a great and wonderful Christmas and New Year's and let's see how well 29 turns out to be. As always, let's start with Yelly and let's get this going. Here we are at Yellowstone Caldera Supervolcano in northwest Wyoming. You can see here's Yellowstone Lake, West Thumb Lake, here's Hebgen Lake, so Maple Creek's right here, Norris is right about here, Old Faithful is right about here, and we did have some swarming near the West Thumb area, and that big swarm that I'll talk about in just a second and I have talked about before. Some slight swarming up near the Maple Creek area, but there have been a total of 120 earthquakes reported for the month of December 2018 for Yellowstone Caldera. Now, this is very deceiving. During December, there was some slight swarming near the Maple Creek area, but the majority of the activity was centered around Yellowstone Lake this time. In my last video about Yellowstone, a link will be posted in the description box below, but you could always just go to my most recent videos right now. I talked about the most recent large swarm to occur at Yellowstone, which occurred on December 31st and occurred in very rapid succession. So far, only 58 of those earthquakes have been reported, which isn't too bad. Want to know how many earthquakes struck the area during 5 hours and 35 minutes on December 31st, 2018? 255 occurring in two separate episodes with it being completely silent right in the middle of the two episodes. So there was two episodes of seismicity within 5 hours and 35 minutes. One episode saw probably half of the 255 and the other half of the 255 earthquakes occurred in the second episode. And they occurred in very rapid succession. A lot of the earthquakes that weren't reported probably were pretty small, but still. 
they should have reported around 100. But there are some pretty large magnitudes in there, guys. There's a lot of magnitude 1s, a lot of 1.5s, and a few magnitude 2s, with the largest being the 2.8. And yes, over 255 earthquakes struck within that time period. So when looking at the total earthquake count, add at least maybe like 200 or so. So that'd make this 320. But remember, a lot of the earthquakes that weren't reported were really small, but still, they still happen and they showed up on surrounding stations. So there's still earthquakes, guys. Now the exact count of earthquakes was determined using multiple stations and using the P wave cross correlation method using the program waves. The swarm, again, did have many very small events under 0.5 that were not reported. But the majority of the swarm was made up of earthquakes larger than magnitude 1, with the largest reportedly being a magnitude 2.8 among many other magnitude 2s. Also, the month of December did see about four separate rapid-fire swarms on the northern tip of West Thumb Lake, but those pale in comparison to the December 31st swarm. The swarm on December 31st, New Year's Eve, also had characteristics such as VT quakes and hybrid quakes, strikingly reminiscent of the 2008-2009 dike intrusion of Yellowstone Lake. So although seismicity appears to be much lower this month, their reporting of earthquakes has been kind of low. Up in the Norris Geyser Basin, Steamboat Geyser erupted a total of three times in December, shattering the record previously set in 1964. It used to be 29 eruptions in one year, but the current record now is 32 eruptions in one year, which occurred in 2018. Sadly, USGS is not reporting the 32nd Steamboat eruption for some reason, even though it was clearly shown on both Seismic Station YNM and the Tantalus Creek water chart. Also, if you guys would like to see the seismic plots and helicorders of every steamboat eruption since it started in 2018, see, I pretty much have all, no, not pretty much, I exactly, exactly have every single steamboat eruption of 2018, all the plots of all 32 eruptions. If you want to come see that, I think they're pretty cool. So just go to the description box below, click the link to my website, which is right under my email address. Go to the Seismic Events drop-down menu and click Steamboat 2018. We are in 2019 right now, so the official record of Steamboat eruptions is 32 eruptions. Will Steamboat break the record again in 2019? We will have to wait and see. For the Yellowstone Supervolcanic Complex, the largest earthquake to occur within the month of December was a magnitude 3.1 at 15.7 kilometers in depth on December 20th, 2018 at 1636 UTC. It struck well beyond the perimeter of Yellowstone National Park, so I'm not going to use this one for the coming plots. I would like to use the largest event which actually occurred inside of the National Park and Caldera Boundary. It was a magnitude 2.8. But I already did the plots for the 2.7. I screwed up there. So I'm just going to use the 2.7 at a shallow 1.5 kilometers in depth on December 31st, 2018 at 725 UTC. This earthquake was the second largest event of the December 31st swarm, which contained over 255 earthquakes. A few of the unreported events were around magnitude 2.0, but I believe they have reported all of the twos that did occur during the swarm. I believe. Now, about half of the unreported events were around 1.0. Most of those, I believe, have been reported. Some haven't already. And the rest were very small, but still happened in very rapid succession. Here's the December 31st, 2018 earthquake swarm. Here's Borehole 208, real quick. You can see the whole helicorder here. Let me make it larger. Remember, this is what you can do with swarm. This is called scaling. Remember, you can scale it any way you want. That's why I love the program Swarm, because you can do whatever you want. Now, real quick, we're going to do the magnitude 2.7 at 1.5 kilometers in depth at 725 UTC, which was this event right here. Let me pan this down. You already know it's borehole 208. So at 725 UTC, there it is right there. Notice the extended coda. I believe this was a hybrid earthquake. Let's log frequency off and go to spectra. Notice the dominant low frequency, there were of course strong frequencies going up to about 25 hertz, possibly beyond. But the dominant, the strongest frequencies, especially with an elongated coda, which means a very long end tail of an earthquake, to me seems like this was a rock breaking event caused by a very thick fluid like magma. I do not believe water created this. Now I believe 
hydrothermal activity did cause the February 2018 swarm and the rapid fire swarms we see on the northern tip of West Thumb Lake. But this swarm was different, and this swarm was, again, strikingly reminiscent of the 2008-2009 dike intrusion at Yellowstone Lake. But we need to save on time because I do not have much time. And the magnitude 2.8 that I uh, did not catch was this one right here, I believe. They marked this as a magnitude 2.8 with a 2.4 right before it. And the, I believe this is a hybrid event as well. Look at the dominant low frequencies. Of course, strong frequencies go in beyond that. But the dominant frequencies, just like the other earthquake, remain below 3 hertz. And here we are at the reported earthquake totals for Yellowstone National Park and Caldera for the entire year of 2018. Notice that I have the perimeter of the data set a little bit farther beyond the boundaries than I usually do. I like to do this for yearly statistics only just to get a good idea of all activity that took place for the location in question and for just beyond the perimeter because you never know what events could be related to the Yellowstone magmatic system because it's very complex. Remember to add at least 180 to 200 earthquakes to this count. There were a total of 2,270 earthquakes for the whole year of 2018. 2018 also saw multiple swarms, including the February 2018 swarm, which I personally believe was caused by tectonic stresses due to upwelling hydrothermal fluids. Multiple, multiple minor to moderate earthquake swarms also broke out near West Thumb Lake on the northern tip and also just to the south. The rapid succession swarms that break out near West Thumb, which seem to be increasing every year, are caused by what I believe to be a new hydrothermal feature forming. Another notable swarm was the Rapid Fire Swarm, ju just west of the northern tip of Yellowstone Lake. Using the program waves and data collected from surrounding stations, I determined 255 earthquakes struck on December 31st, 2018, within two episodes, within a time period of 5 hours and 35 minutes. Also, many of the events occurred in such rapid succession that it was kind of hard to tell them apart. Now, the largest earthquake for the whole year of 2018 was a magnitude 3.1 at 9.8 kilometers in depth. You can obviously see two other magnitude 3.1 earthquakes reported here, and they happened both on the same day. February 18th, 2018, within about 10 hours of each other, and the other 3.1 struck just two days later. They were both part of the February 2018 swarm at Maple Creek. Since they pretty much are the same size, I will say the first one here was the largest, just to save on time. Again, 3.1, 9.8 kilometers in depth, multiple people did feel it. And here are the seismogram spectrogram spectral plots for the largest earthquake to occur in Yellowstone within the year 2018. It was a magnitude 3.1 at 9.8 kilometers on, uh, in depth, excuse me, on February 18, 2018 at 1529 UTC. It was one of the largest events in the February 2018 swarm in Maple Creek. Notice the dominant frequency is pretty much of all ranges, but that isn't the most interesting thing. Now you can kind of see it on the seismogram waveform plot right here. But when you zoom in more on this earthquake, you could see there was far more power going towards the surface than down, which I thought was very intriguing. Many earthquakes in the February swarm were small, and some did occur in rapid succession. However, their characteristics were not as concerning as the Yellowstone Lake and West Thumb Lake swarms. Now here is the heli quarter for February 18th, 2018, excuse me, for YMC. You can see the earthquake I just showed is right about, where'd it go? It's right here. That is the largest event of 2018, right there, but there are, of course, multiple other earthquakes near the same size. This swarm very well may be part of the same process that kick-started the Maple Creek 2017 swarm, which occurred about a year and a half ago from the time I am recording this. Remember, it is my personal theory this one here was caused by tectonic stresses, caused by the upwelling of hydrothermal fluids, but the VT and hybrid events that are occurring near West Thumb Lake, both in 2008-2009 and a resurgence of it just on December 31st, I believe that is a uh, magma intrusion itself, but just a small amount. I don't know. We'll have to very, keep a very close eye on it. Now, real quick before I get into the GPS deformation charts, here's borehole 208, the tilt meter for borehole 208, which resides on the northern tip of Yellowstone Lake and is the closest tilt meter to the swarm that we saw on the 31st. I believe 
This is north-south, and this is east-west. Oh, east, that is what we learned in math. I'm pretty sure. Let me know if I'm wrong about that. We did see a change. We did see, look, prior to, now the swarm started right about here. Notice how right about when the swarm started in this area, it starts to go back up. It started to dip down about probably a day before the swarm started. The swarm occurred, and it is going back up once again, and it has been going up and up and up for quite a while now. Look at that. Yeah, it just goes up and up and up. So there was a slight change during the swarm. So I don't know what was going on then, but something definitely was trying to break through, I believe. Here we are at the deformation instruments for Yellowstone Caldera on volcanoes.usgs.gov. Let's go to LKWY. This is the GPS deformation chart for the northern tip of Yellowstone Lake at LKWY. Here is vertical uplifter subsidence. The top two charts are horizontal deformation with east-west showing east-west deformation and north showing north-south deformation. Our main focus here is usually the vertical chart at the bottom right here, which shows the way the ground is moving up or down, in other words, uplift or subsidence. In the last update, we saw that subsidence could have started again, but it is too early to tell. Remember, things like these can change very quickly. Also, looking at the middle chart, which shows north-south horizontal deformation, it seems that the ground was starting to head north, just like in previous updates, but it looks like it has stalled as of the most recent data stream. Too early to tell, and we will check it out in the next month's update or you can come to this website here and check it out for yourself no change really on the east west deformation chart which is on the top right here for vertical deformation for from the top of the chart to the bottom from right here to right here we see a total of only 0.3 meters let's go back real quick and go to OFW2 right here here's a GPS deformation chart for near the upper geyser basin near where Old Faithful resides we see sort of the same pattern here as well this is vertical deformation right here it actually seems like this station is detecting slightly more subsidence in that Yellowstone Lake but there also seems to be some small spikes and uplift as well yeah I don't know what's going on here very confusing. A few months ago, it looked like the north-south chart was showing us that the ground was starting to head north, just like some of the other GPS stations we have looked at, but it continues to remain at normal levels. East-west deformation seems to not be changing much at all. Excuse me. The vertical deformation chart shows a total of 0 0.25 meters from top to bottom. Let's go back real quick. Let's go to HVWY, which is the closest to the earthquake swarm that happened. And let's click it and see what's going on here. Now, I usually show WLWY, but since it seems seismicity could be shifting more towards the west, I'm going to use the HVWY from now on, which resides very close to the energetic December 31st swarm. If you wish to see WLWY, you can always come to this website here and check it out. First off, east-west horizontal deformation seems to continue at normal levels, as well as the north-south deformation. However, the north-south deformation looks extremely confusing. I don't know what's going on here, but I'll continue to monitor it. The vertical deformation chart showing uplift or subsidence is showing that subsidence could be starting again, meaning the ground is sinking in this area, not rising, but again, it is too early to tell. You can see the most recent data stream right there. A little confusing what's going on. I don't know what's going on, so... We'll just monitor it very closely. Remember, subsidence can also be a sign that a volcano is changing greatly, not just uplift. For example, during the 2018 Kilauea and Lower East Rift Zone eruptions in Hawaii, Kilauea caldera began to subside so much that it basically collapsed on itself over a period of about four months. For the vertical chart at the bottom, we see a total of 0 0.18 meters from top to bottom. Let's go back and let's go to Norris real quick. Here is Norris. This is NRWY in the Norris Geyser Basin, near where Steamboat Geyser resides. Looking at the bottom, vertical, uplift subsidence chart, you can tell the period of uplift has ceased. Whether this is a lull in uplift or a new subsidence pattern is emerging remains to be seen. According to the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, the same pause and uplift occurred exactly the same time last year in 2017, so this could represent a connection to seasonal changes possibly, but we will have to wait and see. That means that uplift could start back up at any time. Last month, we saw the north-south horizontal deformation chart right here was showing us that the ground was starting to move towards the north, just like some of the other instruments in the area, but it seems it has stalled. I'm unsure why there was a spike in deformation heading to the north only. It seems a strange direction for a large amount of land to travel. 
The east-west chart here is not showing much of a change at all. So that's pretty much it right now for Yellowstone. Let's move on to another very potentially dangerous supervolcanic caldera. Here we are at the Long Valley Supervolcanic Complex. I have it on grayscale here because it's kind of hard to see all the earthquakes when I have it on terrain or the satellite view. You can see the caldera imprint for Long Valley Caldera is right in this area right here. Just showing you all the quakes. Let me move this over. There have been a total of 272 earthquakes at Long Valley Caldera for the whole month of December 2018, which is about half of the total for last month. That is very low for Long Valley, and it seems Yellowstone could have a higher earthquake count than Long Valley since many of the earthquakes in December for Yellowstone were not reported. That is abnormal, seeing that Long Valley Supervolcano usually almost always sees higher seismicity counts than any other volcano in the United States. The majority of the events occurred at the center of the caldera itself, stretching and spreading out like a fan towards the south. It seemed there was some seismicity at Mammoth Mountain, which resides on the southwest edge of Long Valley Supervolcano, but nothing as major as the swarm seen in November. I believe it was November, right, that we saw that swarm of about 100 earthquakes or so? I think it was about 100 earthquakes within a day under Mammoth Mountain, then it just stopped. The largest event for Long Valley for December was a magnitude 3.2 at 10.1 kilometers in depth, but that was far beyond the caldera, so I will use the second largest event, which was a magnitude 2.8 at 5.5 kilometers in depth, a few miles south of the southern edge of Long Valley. It struck on December 22, 2018 at 0.15 UTC. For your convenience, here are the seismogram, spectrogram, spectral plots for the most recent largest earthquake to occur at Long Valley Supervolcano within the month of December. This was a magnitude 2.8 earthquake at 5.5 kilometers in depth on December 22nd. This earthquake had dominant high frequencies and appears to be a typical earthquake, but it seems like this earthquake did occur as part of a small swarm just south of Long Valley. Some of the earthquakes in the swarm were small, but did carry some lower frequencies than what I would expect. I thought that was very interesting. Now, during the entire year 2018, for Long Valley Caldera and the surrounding area from magnitude negative 0.5 and above, there have been exactly 5,999 reported earthquake events. Remember, I'm going to update my earthquake statistics page soon on my website, so please check back every day to see if I have, maybe a few days from the time I upload this video. So, I also create custom-made bar, bar charts Excuse me, on that page on my website showing how activity has increased or decreased at Long Valley and other volcanoes in the areas that I monitor. Notice how over the whole year, earthquakes occurred really not at all on the northern half of the caldera. Notice that? Here's the northern portion of the caldera. Look at that, pretty much right in the center, uh, fanning out towards the south. I think it's very interesting how most of them occur in the center of the caldera and to the southwest, and that's pretty much where we see the seismicity. Also, it seems more seismicity occurred in the center of the caldera as well, but spread out towards the south. Very interesting. The largest event of 2018 for Long Valley was a magnitude 3.6 and 3.2, but for the plots I'm about to show, I would like to use an, the largest event that was closest to the caldera. The earthquakes that occur in this region here have a chance of both either being connected to increased deformation from Long Valley or other processes that are not connected to Long Valley. The largest event for near Long Valley Caldera was a magnitude 3.1 earthquake at 9 kilometers in depth on January 16, 2018. But the next largest, largest event was only 0.1 in magnitude smaller and occurred directly inside the caldera, so I'll use that for one of the plots. It was a magnitude 3.0 at 5.8 kilometers in depth on July 27, 2018 at 5.49 UTC. Now here are the seismogram, spectrogram, spectral plots for the largest event to occur within the caldera boundary for Long Valley Supervolcano. It was a magnitude 3.0 at 5.8 kilometers in depth. This earthquake occurred as part of an ongoing swarm during this time period for Long Valley. Notice the tail of this earthquake, the coda, was quite long for a normal tectonic event. I believe this was more of a hybrid event than a VT event. It looks somewhat similar to the hybrid events shown on December 31st, 2018 at Yellowstone Lake and during the 2008-2009 Yellowstone Lake Dyke Intrusion event. Notice strong frequencies of all ranges, but it appears the strongest frequencies of this earthquake were below 7 Hz, 
with 6 Hz and 1.5 Hz being the strongest frequencies. This was not at all a low frequency earthquake, but it did have dominant low to mid range frequencies. I believe this earthquake and many others that took part of the swarm were caused by the upwelling of magma creating stress on the local water table and hydrothermal systems. Remember, even swarms stated to be caused by tectonic forces or hydrothermal forces can still have deep roots in the upwelling of magma from any chamber. Long Valley is a dangerous threat, and I do believe it is much closer to an eruption than Yellowstone is. I, you know, it could be just as dangerous as a Yellowstone eruption, if not more, but I think it could be a lot more dangerous. You know, it could be the same size as a Yellowstone eruption, and both would be devastating to our crops, of course, but far more people live near Long Valley than live near Yellowstone. Now here we have the deformation instruments for Long Valley Caldera. Let's go to P639 real quick. Click on that. Looking at the vertical chart for P639, it seems uplift has been almost constant since this chart started in February 2014. It is likely this will continue and more swarms could break out at any time. Notice, however, there seems to be recent spikes in both uplift and subsidence shown by the recent data stream, but it looks like uplift could be starting once again, as is the usual direction. Now, it is my opinion, and some professionals' opinions as well, that due to the sheer amount of magma at such a shallow depth, the constant uplift is obviously being caused by increased magma supply to the main reservoir or chamber of Long Valley. This, of course, will eventually lead to an eruption if it does not subside, and there is already a crap load of magma down there at a very shallow depth that it could produce another super eruption if it erupted at full capacity today. Uplift has not been too extreme, though, but is enough to warrant close attention over the next few years if it does not stop. As we see on the north-south horizontal deformation chart, there have been some extremely interesting activity, but the most recent data suggests the ground is continuing the same pattern. Southwest-oriented inflation. That means the ground is moving upwards towards the southwest. For the vertical deformation chart, we see a total of 0.08 meters from top to bottom. So again, it's not too major, at least not yet. Remember, magma does have a mind of its own, and volcanoes can change unexpectedly in the blink of an eye, sometimes without warning. The 2008-2009 Yellowstone event, the December 31st, 2018 Yellowstone event, and the 2018 Kilauea eruptions are a testament to that fact, among many other events. That is why volcanic seismology is of the utmost importance to me. Now let's go back and go to CA99. Let's click on that real fast. Here's the deformation chart for CA99, which resides just southwest of the instrument I just previously showed. Now this is what you have to watch out for. Now, notice, let's go back to P639. Notice how on, come on buddy, P639, this starts at February 2014. Well, let's go back to CA99. Come on, buddy. So that one, the previous one started on February 2014. Look at this one. It started all the way back in 2001. Remember, the smaller the time frame, the more detail you will see, and vice versa. And that does not just go for seismic plots, guys. That goes for uplift charts, too. If you keep the size of a chart the same, but increase the time frame of the data shown, it will show less and less detail. It looks like uplift is consistent here as well. It appears to have started around late 2011, took a quick dip at the start of 2013, and has been rising ever since. Last month, we noticed there were a few spikes in subsidence, but now there is a spike in uplift. Notice that little dot right there, the most recent data stream? We will see in the next update where this is heading. It is too early to tell. The vertical chart from top to bottom, again, is only 0.16 meters. Yellowstone still is seeing higher deformation counts for the past decade or so than Long Valley is, but it is likely subsidence could continue for Yellowstone, but that uplift could be starting back up for Long Valley. But it is my personal theory that Long Valley is closer to an eruption than Yellowstone. Please don't bite my head off. It's just a theory. Remember, without theories, we wouldn't have science. So don't let someone tell you that your theory doesn't count because it sounds crazy, because the truth is, truth is almost always crazier than fiction. Let's go back. Let's go to RDOM right here, just real fast. And here's the deformation data for RDOM, which resides pretty much right in the middle of the caldera. Uplift recorded by this instrument actually seems to have stalled, at least for the moment, just like we saw in previous updates. This station seems to be just behind the deformation area, so multiple instruments do confirm that it is likely vertical southwest deformation will continue. Here's the east-west chart. 
going down means it's going west. North-south chart going down means it's going south. So that's southwest right there, and it's going up. Some uplift. So that is southwest oriented uplift. You know, a lot of this could change, but if increased deformation continues and large swarms occur on the deformation front, which would be the south-southwest edge of Long Valley, it is a good idea to monitor the situation closely. Long Valley is a very potentially hazardous supervolcano, and the whole area, even outside the perimeter of Long Valley Caldera, is very volcanic. You'd be surprised. Mount St. Helens erupted only 0.29 cubic miles of ash, and even rained ash in Denver, Colorado, while the ash plumes circled the world. If 0 0.29 cubic miles can do that, then what can 140 cubic miles or even 240 cubic miles do? Please monitor this volcano, protect your family, and be prepared. God does not give us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. What happens, happens. And there is nothing, nothing we can do to stop the power of volcanoes, even if we think we can. In regards to the vertical deformation chart, from top to bottom, we see a total of 0.12 meters. Here are the earthquakes that have been reported for the Newberry Caldera area in Oregon. Excuse me. For December 2018, there have been a total of seven reported earthquake events. That is much higher than the zero earthquakes that we saw last month. I do have to warn you, though, that most of these events at Newberry are confirmed low-frequency events with frequencies remaining below 5 Hz, possibly indicative of a small amount of restless magma trying to find its way. First, you can see a pair of events reported for December 13th. Let's pan down just real quick. See, there's two for December 13th, one right there and one right there. Sadly, these two events were completely removed by the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network, but USGS still has them listed. Why? Yeah, they were completely removed from the PNSN catalog. I show this proof in one of my recent videos and on my website. Please go to the link that is right below my email address in the description box below. Once there, go to the Seismic Events drop-down menu and click Cascade Volcanoes Low Frequency Events. Here we are at Cascades Volcanoes Low Frequency Events on my website under the Seismic Events drop-down menu. You can see I have many, 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 many different plots. This already has multiple events listed. Most of the plots for the events are all from the PNSN catalog, except for one or two unreported events. I even list the event ID numbers for the PNSN catalog. The two low frequency events on December 13, 2018 were completely removed, but not before I was able to take a picture, get some data, get the plots, and even write down the ID number. I talk about it here on this page and on one of my recent videos, which there is a link to if you look at the appropriate plot info on this page. And here we are in the Seismic Program Swarm for December 13th, so we can take a look at the two reported low-frequency events that were completely removed, and I even talked to some of the local quarries in the area. They said it was not them, and this was pretty much in the morning, guys. Uh, Really, it was pretty much at night, in the middle of the night. Definitely not quarry blasts. I already talked to the guys anyways. Um, about 6 to 12 hours before, there were uh, two or three emergent events. Look at this. With dominant mid-range frequencies. Notice that? Very emergent. And then goes down. And then there's another emergent event right there. Few more emergent events. Don't know what was going on there. Does not look like surface noise. They almost look like rock falls, but I'm unsure why there would be this many rock falls at Newberry right now. Let's take a quick look at the unreported events. Just prior to the first low-frequency earthquake, we see a low-frequency tremor as it emerges and approaches the low-frequency earthquake. Here's the LF earthquake. Let's check the spectrogram out. There's the spectrogram. Check the dominant frequencies just real fast. Log power off. Dominant frequency is around about 2 hertz and pretty much doesn't go even past 5 hertz at all. Notice how it does not really go past 5 hertz at all. Even the weaker frequencies don't even go past 5 hertz really. Definitely a low frequency earthquake. Let's check out the other unreported event. Well, it was reported. In the middle there was an emergent low frequency tremor. It was not that big, about 400 amplitude count, but still definitely got some magma moving right there. And here is the second low frequency earthquake, which occurred just a few minutes after the first one at Newberry Caldera. And let's go over. And there it is. Again, dominant frequencies below 5 hertz with weaker frequencies not even really going past 6 hertz. So let's see, let's see, that's about, let's see right there, about 6.4. So definitely a low frequency earthquake, guys, definitely.
Here we are back in Newberry Caldera. So we know that PNS had removed two low frequency events from their catalog, but USGS is still reporting them. And yes, you can search specifically for low frequency events on their custom search on their website. The only earthquake reported that was not a low frequency event was the magnitude 0.4 at 1.7 kilometers in depth. This was the first earthquake of the short burst in seismicity at Newberry on December 22nd and 23rd of 2018. Again, this was the only earthquake that was not a low frequency earthquake. It seems Newberry is seeing a slight increase in seismicity, but low frequency seismicity. Other years have seen LF events at Newberry, yes, but to the best of my knowledge, this is the most amount of LF events for one month for Newberry, even for one year. The largest reported event for Newberry Caldera for December 2018 was a magnitude 1.3 low frequency earthquake at 7.9 kilometers in depth on December 22nd, 2018 at 2343 UTC and was a part of a burst in low frequency seismicity on this date. Now just a heads up, sometimes quarry or mine blasts can look like low frequency events, however I contacted multiple mines and quarries in the area and they said it wasn't them. Plus these low frequency events definitely did not look like a surface blast, but you know I like to cover all my bases first. Here we are in the seismic program swarm. Now I usually just show a three plot image for the largest event, but I want to show you these low frequency events that occurred on this day. I believe something is changing under Newberry Caldera. We will have to wait and see, but there has been an increase in these LF events. Also, some of the reported low frequency events were not earthquakes, but were emergent and appeared to be more along the lines of a tremor rather than an earthquake. Here's the one at 2343, which is the largest event, which was a magnitude 1.3. The largest event was a low frequency earthquake, largest event for December 2018. This one looked more along the lines of a tremor. Then there's a small merchant event at the end. And I believe there was something else as well. I don't think I can find it though. I'm not seeing it, so I think I missed it. There's an actual earthquake. See, this is what a high frequency earthquake looks like, a normal VT event at Newberry. That's not what we've been seeing lately. And there's something right there too. Not seeing much of anything else. So there, those are right there. And there's also another event, I believe, at 336 UTC on the next day. Where is 336? I'm wasting time. 336. And there it is right there. It was a very small low frequency event. Very small, but still, it happened. Here are all of the reported earthquakes for Newberry Caldera for 2018. Only 23 reported events, but two of those are quarry blasts. Most of the seismicity for 2018 has been strictly low frequency activity, including low frequency tremor, with a few small normal earthquakes spread around the area. A few of the normal earthquakes were not reported, but still this count is likely to be accurate. Maybe a few more. The largest event for the whole year of 2018, let's go down was a magnitude 2.1 explosion, but since this was a quarry blast, I will skip that. The largest actual seismic event for the whole year was a magnitude, let's go down, I think it's down here. Yep, there it is, it was a magnitude 1.4 low frequency earthquake at 9.3 kilometers in depth on February 24th, 2018 at 919 UTC, just under the western edge of Newberry Caldera. I actually have the plots to this event on my website from the two closest seismic stations. You can clearly see dominant low frequencies, and this is very similar similar, excuse me, to the other low frequency events that have been occurring at Newberry recently. Is Newberry awakening? Who knows, but we will monitor the area closely. And here are the plots once again for the February, February 24th, excuse me, event. We got two stations norm and C or oh, I thought it was CPCO, it's actually NN19. Now I know I usually do deformation charts, but to keep this video short, since I'm doing yearly earthquake counts, I'm not gonna show any more deformation charts, guys. I'm gonna be strictly seismicity right now, just strictly seismicity. If any of you guys want to see the deformation charts for any of the volcanoes I'm covering that I don't show the deformation charts for, please go to volcanoes.usgs.gov, click the volcano that you want, go to its page, and click monitoring, and you can look at the charts yourself. Don't worry, next update I will do the deformation charts, but it's just that this video is going to be really long.
Now here we are at one of the most infamous Pacific Northwest volcanoes, Mount Rainier, which has a beautiful but potentially deadly backdrop to the Seattle skyline. There have been only seven reported earthquakes for Mount Rainier within the month of December 2018, which is much lower than what we have seen in previous months. Recently, it almost seems like Rainier has been decreasing in seismicity each month. This is the fourth month in a row that we have seen a drop in seismicity. Seven earthquakes is very low for Mount Rainier for one month. Most of the earthquakes occurred directly beneath the summit with a few scattered beyond the base, base Excuse me, towards the southwest down here. Notice that? The largest earthquake occurred on December 12, 2018. And let's see, which one was it? Was it this one? I believe it was this one. Yeah. Uh, December 12, 2018 at 2147 UTC and was a magnitude 1.7 earthquake at 8.8 .8 kilometers in depth. However, that occurred far beyond Rainier. So as you know for the plots, I would like to use the magnitude 1.6 at 1.1 kilometers in depth, which is right here. It occurred directly under the cone of Rainier and struck on December 22, 2018 at 1853 UTC. For your convenience, here are the seismogram, spectrogram, spectral plots for the largest earthquake to occur under Mount Rainier Stratovolcano within the month of December 2018. This earthquake was a typical VT, volcano tectonic earthquake, with strong high frequencies. However, this event had dominant mid-range frequencies between 3.5 Hz to 6 Hz. There also seemed to be two very tiny aftershocks just after the earthquake itself, shown in the plots. And here is all of 2018 seismicity for Mount Rainier. There has been a total of 267 earthquakes for Mount Rainier in 2018. There were a few small swarms under the summit and a large increase in glacial tremor, tremor excuse me, and ice earthquakes around August to October 2018. And some other rock falls occurred too. Something really was shifting, but it stopped. Nothing really major occurred this year, and seismicity appears to show the same pattern as previous years. About two-thirds of the seismicity occurring under the volcano, and a little less than a third of the events occurring almost a rectangle formation forming north to south, just to the west. You can see right here. The largest event for the Mount Rainier area for 2018 was a magnitude 3.0 at 12 kilometers in depth on April 12, 2018 at 639 UTC. However, that event occurred near Mount Rainier, yes, but occurred far to the west. Since I like to only use the largest event under any given volcano for the plots, I will use the largest event underneath the Rainier volcano itself. It is the same largest earthquake that I just showed for the month of December and was a magnitude 1.6. Let's see, that one was far away, that one was far away, just double checking. 1.6, come on, give me one, there it is, yep, 1.6 at 1.1 kilometers in depth. Now, I already showed the three-plot image since it was the largest event to occur in Mount Rainier, so just go back about a minute or two if you want to see the plot. Now, again, I'm not doing any more deformation charts, so we're going to move on to the next volcano in the update. Remember, if you want to see any more deformation charts, just go to volcanoes.usgs.gov, click the volcano page for any volcano you want, and click monitoring. Here we are at the volcano that gave my mother a very bad day on May 18th, 1980. Mount St. Helens. This volcano pummeled my mother's house with inches of ash and even rained ash on my dad's car in Denver, Colorado. The main St. Helens eruption ejected 0.29 cubic miles of ash compared to the possible 140 or even 240 cubic miles the Long Valley could possibly eject during its next eruption. There have been only eight earthquakes in Mount St. Helens for December 2018, which is much lower than last month's quake totals. Why have the Cascade Volcanoes been so quiet lately? Almost a little too quiet, guys. It seems some events occurred under the summit, with a few scattered to the north. One down here, an explosion down here, and another earthquake right there. The largest reported event for Mount St. Helens during this time period was a magnitude 1.5 explosion on December 14, 2018, at 2140 UTC, which struck just to the southwest of the infamous volcano right down here. I know I usually don't do this, but seismicity is so low, and it is an odd explosion. And it is very interesting that an explosion of this size occurred this close to Mount St. Helens. Regardless of cause, it's a very interesting event. For your convenience, here are the seismogram, spectrogram, spectral plots of the largest event to occur at the Mount St. Helens Stratovolcano for the month of December 2018. This was a very interesting event. 
Not only did it occur very close to the volcano, but I am unsure of any quarries or mines this close to St. Helens. What was this explosion caused by? It almost looks like a hybrid earthquake, but it does look more like an explosion. Does anyone know what anyone could have been doing blowing stuff up in this location? Very confusing. And plus, this was a very large explosion that caused a magnitude 1.5 earthquake. I mean, it wasn't too big, but still. Very interesting. Now here are all of the earthquakes for Mount St. Helens for the entire year of 2018 for all magnitudes. There have been 613 reported events. By the way, the Mount St. Helens crater is right here. A few earthquakes are seen scattered around the perimeter, but the majority of the seismicity occurred directly under the Mount St. Helens volcano and surprisingly off towards the northeast. You notice that? Something interesting to note. The seismicity for 2018 under this area right here has been about as twice as deep or so as the earthquakes that are occurring directly under the volcano itself. You can see two sources of seismicity for this area, so could the deeper earthquakes up here to the northeast be caused by the magma chamber and it causes shallower seismicity to occur under the volcano itself? Who knows, but I thought it was very interesting. The largest event to occur at Mount St. Helens for all of 2018 was a magnitude 3.9 earthquake at 10.2 kilometers in depth on January 3rd, 2018 at 836 UTC, striking in that patch of seismicity just to the northeast of Helens. Over 223 people reported feeling this earthquake at Mount St. Helens. That's a lot of people. Here are the seismogram, spectrogram, spectral plots for the largest earthquake to occur in Mount St. Helens during the year 2018. Again, it was a magnitude 3.9 at 10.2 kilometers in depth and was quite strong. Notice strong frequencies going well beyond 25 hertz. However, dominant frequencies remained below 5 hertz and this event lasted quite a while. This was a noteworthy earthquake as of late. However, recently seismicity at Helens is very quiet, just like the rest of the Cascade Range. Like I said earlier, a little too quiet for comfort. Now to save on time, again, I am skipping the deformation charts for the rest of the volcanoes of this update because there really hasn't been much anything noteworthy, but if you feel like it, you can always go to volcanoes.usgs.gov to monitor deformation charts for many different volcanoes. Here we are at the Mount Hood volcano in Northern Oregon, which straddles the border between Washington and Oregon. There have only been two reported earthquake events at Mount Hood for the month of December 2018. One occurred directly under the volcano, and one occurred directly under the southern base of Mount Hood. The largest earthquake, again, struck directly under the volcano, and was a magnitude 1.1 at 0.7 kilometers in depth on December 20th, 2018 at 538 UTC. Again, for your convenience, here are the seismogram, spectrogram, spectral plots for the largest earthquake to occur at Mount Hood's stratovolcano within the month of December. Notice the dominant frequencies between 5 Hz and 10 Hz. This was a normal VT earthquake and is part of the normal background seismicity for Mount Hood and other volcanoes. For December, seismicity remains extremely low. But remember, at any volcano, that can change extremely fast. For the whole year of 2018, Mount Hood in Oregon saw only 34 earthquakes. That's it. Now, I monitor this area as much as I can, and I can say it is likely the earthquake counts are accurate. Mount Hood is extremely quiet. The largest events of 2018 were three magnitude 1.6 earthquakes. As usual, when dealing with multiple events of the same size, I will use the most recent. It was, of course, a magnitude 1.6 at 5.7 kilometers in depth on August 4, 2018 at 1538 UTC. Here are the seismogram, spectrogram, spectral plots for the largest earthquake to occur at Mount Hood for 2018. Again, it was a magnitude 1.6 at 5.7 kilometers in depth right under Mount Hood. Frequencies of this event seem to increase towards and decrease away from the 10 hertz line. This was a normal VT earthquake and seismicity is below background levels, at least for now. Since not many changes are occurring and I want to save on time, again, I will not be showing any more deformation charts for the rest of the video, but you can always go to volcanoes.usgs.gov to see them. Here is Mount Shasta, which resides just south of the California-Oregon border. Also, if you have ever driven from southern Oregon into California using I-5, you already know the volcano is pretty large. 
there was actually six earthquakes during the month of December 2018, which to me was kind of a shock since this volcano is usually extremely silent, more so silent than Mount Hood. The largest event of December 2018 was a magnitude 2.0 just barely beyond the base towards the northwest. It occurred at 21.1 kilometers in depth on December 17, 2018 at 1952 UTC. Here are the seismogram spectrogram spectral plots of the largest earthquake to occur within the Mount Shasta perimeter during the month of 2018. This station does not pick up earthquakes that well, but this magnitude 2.0 was pretty deep than recent seismicity, striking around 21.1 kilometers in depth. This earthquake had dominant mid to high range frequencies and appears to be a normal tectonic event. For Mount Shasta in Northern California, for the whole of 2018, for all magnitudes, there have only been 33 reported earthquakes. That is very low for one year for any potentially active volcano. A few are scattered around the western half of the area. Notice there's one right here, there's the 2.0. There's one there, right there. But most of the seismicity seems to have occurred towards the northeast, the east, and the southeast of Mount Shasta. Notice how pretty much cut Mount Shasta in half. It pretty much looks like the seismicity occurred more on the eastern half than the western half. Now, the largest event for the whole year was a magnitude 2.0 at 21.1 kilometers in depth on December 17, 2018, at 1952 UTC. <laughs> This is the earthquake that I just showed. Seismicity and deformation remain at normal or below normal levels, but remember that can change very quickly with any volcano. Now let's move on to the last volcano of the update. Let's go over here. And I don't think that's there it is. Okay, so let's turn on terrain real quick. There we go, that's better. So you can see one is right here, two, three, and four. Now for Lassen Peak, this is Lassen Peak. Again, Glacier Peak and Washington State will be added to the update once new instruments are installed. But again, here's Lassen Peak, a volcano in Northern California, just 60 miles southeast of Mount Shasta. For the month of December 2018, only four earthquakes have been reported, which is much lower than any of the previous months. Why is it that pretty much all of the volcanoes in the Cascade Range are all of a sudden becoming eerily silent? I don't know if that's a good thing. Seismicity at volcanoes should be higher than what we have been seeing lately. The largest event of December 2018 was a magnitude 0.4 earthquake at 2.8 kilometers in depth on December 9th, 2018 at 1735 UTC. For your convenience, here are the seismogram, spectrogram, spectral plots for the largest earthquake to occur at Lassen Peak for the month of December. This was again a magnitude 0.4 at 2.8 kilometers in depth. Notice the high range frequencies and very short tail. Really, it doesn't even look like this earthquake even had a coda. Remember, a coda simply means the end tail of an earthquake. This event was quite small, and seismicity was extremely low for Lawson Peak during December. How come all of the Cascade volcanoes from Washington to California have been calming down near around the same time? Let me know what you think in the comments section below. During the entire year 2018, around 177 earthquakes of all magnitudes were detected beneath Lassen Peak in California. Notice how the majority of the seismicity remained under Lassen Peak itself. Actually, it is said around two to three volcanic eruptions happen within the Cascade Range every 100 years. They could be minor, they could be major, but that usually is the total count. However, from 1900 to now, a full 100 years, the only major eruption was the Mount St. Helens eruption in 1980. Yes, the Lassen Peak eruption in 1915, which was the first volcanic eruption to be extensively photographed, please search Google for that, was large. But it has been 40 years since any type of volcanic activity, unless you count the tiny volcanic eruptions at St. Helens in 2004-2005. But again, it's been almost 40 years since we've had any type of volcanic activity really at all. The largest earthquake to occur at Lassen Peak Volcanic Center for all of 2018 was a magnitude 2.9 at 4.7 kilometers in depth on February 19th, 2018 at 2152 UTC, and over 11 people actually reported feeling this event. And just for your reverence, here is the seismicity. Most of it occurred right under Lassen Peak itself. 
And here are the seismogram spectrogram spectral plots for the largest earthquake to occur at Lassen Peak Volcano during 2018. It struck directly under Lassen Peak itself and was part of a fast-paced but short-lived swarm at Lassen Peak during this time period. It was quite strong, but was a normal VT earthquake. Remember, VT, volcano tectonic earthquakes, can be caused either by normal tectonic processes or volcanic processes. Of course, multiple VT events can be caused by magma intrusion without too many telltale signs, but what I like to look out for is any low-frequency tremor, low-frequency earthquakes, or hybrid earthquakes that occurred with VT earthquakes as part of the swarm. That would be the time to monitor the area closely. And here we are back at the wonderful Upper Geyser Basin, home to the infamous Old Faithful Geyser, Yellowstone National Park and Caldera. Well, it seems, of course, that Yellowstone and Long Valley supervolcanoes have the highest seismicity counts out of all the volcanoes I showed for the month of 2018, or the month of December 2018, excuse me, and also for the whole year of 2018. Of course, concerning activity at any of these volcanoes will warrant its own video and its own blog post on my website. For those who watch my videos, please go check out my website. My website is helpful in conjunction with my YouTube videos. I will also be able to upload more information on there than if I was only making YouTube videos. And I already have a lot of my research on there already. So if you like, please go check it out. The link to it is below my email address in the description box. The next monthly update will be for January 2019, which will be uploaded a few days after the month has ended. Please visit my recent videos on my channel, which include recent updates. I hope to someday become more educated in regards to volcanoes and earthquakes, and hope to become a volcanic seismologist. Why are most of the volcanoes in the Cascade Range becoming quiet the past few months? Also, why is low-frequency activity slowly rising at Newberry Caldera in Oregon? Hopefully, coming videos and updates will make that known. Thank you all, and keep your heads up, and please be prepared with, at the very absolute least, three days of food and water per person within your household. Please double that per child you have under the age of 12, just in case. If any mistakes have occurred, or I'm wrong about something, please feel free to let me know. I am a chill guy that actually is okay with constructive criticism. Sadly, the world, and especially YouTube, has too big of an ego right now to think constructive criticism is a good thing, especially many specific YouTubers. This is why I rarely watch YouTube videos anymore. I simply rely on the data for my research while making YouTube videos and blog posts. I will always stand for the truth no matter where it leads. Why? Because the truth is considered hate or fear to those who hate or fear the truth. God bless. I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas and New Year's, and may many more be more joyous than the last. See you later, guys.